Our next guest designs and manufactures high-resolution 3D printers, and you're going to see why we're talking about that in a moment. They've been all the rage here at CES 2014. From Form Labs, Sam Jacoby. Sam, welcome into tomorrow. How are you? Good. Thanks for having us on, Dave. It's a pleasure to have you, and, and, and you even brought your big printer and we appreciate that because you're a small guy and that's a big device so <laughs> we like to think it's a pretty small device well yes i mean by comparison but you know it's it's not a dot matrix printer either this is an awesome 3d printer and i gotta say one of the best looking ones we've seen so kudos to you guys right away no wonder you're also a ces innovations honoree Absolutely. Because you got some fun stuff happening there. Yeah. yeah, we took a lot of care in the design and the machine, and we won a number of design awards uh, specifically for the aesthetics, uh, yeah. which is pretty exciting. Because I'll be honest with you, some of the other ones that we've seen and had in our Miami studios even to play with for a while make some fun things, but they sure didn't look like they were ready and available for the public. <laughs> right, know? right. I mean, we really saw an opportunity in making a machine that was – you know, ready for prime time. Yeah. Uh, a whole unit with software, materials, and fantastic design that anyone can feel comfortable putting on their desk, in their workspace, studio, uh, whatever it may be. And then, as if that's not enough, now <laughs> you can print high-resolution things. I, I was going to say images. They're not images. They're 3D items. Right. You, you start with a, a 3D model, sort of a 3D drawing uh, of a file, if you will, uh, and there's a very simple sort of software preparatory step uh, that we have great software that helps you out with. And then you send it over to our printer. Uh, if you take a look at the printer, there is only one button, and that button is the print button. You hit that button, and it gets going. And uh, you get this fantastic, fantastic and you resolution. you get to watch it happening. And that's the coolest thing, I think, about 3D printers that have been designed properly with see-through covers. <laughs> that's right. We've yeah. also seen some that you don't get to see it, maybe through a little tiny window. But when it's finished, we'll show you. Well, that's half the, half the fun is watching it being built. <laughs> it, 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 it is neat. You know, one of the reasons why the Form 1, we call it a high-resolution 3D printer, is because unlike many others, it uses a laser to cure a liquid polymer. So as it's Jeez. printing, you actually see that laser zipping all around. It's a little mini light show. Uh, very cool. And uh, Chris is now showing, if you're in the car driving, have no fear. Come see the video whenever you have a chance at intotomorrow.com. But Chris is now showing the Eiffel Tower that you printed in the Form 1. And I have never seen such detail. I mean, intricate kinds of things. How long would this have taken to print? Uh, this is actually printed in two parts, and all told, it took about uh, 12 to 14 hours. Wow, but yeah. well worth it. I it, mean, what a cool-looking uh, end result there. And you talk about something else that's really cool. While, while Chris is looking, check this. Is it, let me turn it. Well, I have it turned the right way. There we go. This is, uh, how do you describe this, part of an airplane yeah, wing? Th this is a, an experimental aircraft design. It's half of a blended wing body. Uh, and this is a really great use of, of performance 3D printers like this, allowing engineers to experiment with designs quickly, see how they might lurk before, of course, you scale up your operations and make the kind of investments that it would take to sure. make a new aircraft. And it also, it's also encouraging to know that there's a lot of structure that goes into the body of the plane so that when you're in that turbulence thing and the, whim, the wings are flapping, uh, have no fear. They're not going to fall off. Uh, <laughs> this is a good example of how uh, a structure is, is designed and built very well. And then on top of that, uh, just to keep things fun, here's a skull that you design. Oh, and the head, the right. top of the head I mean, comes off. Look at that. It's like a, a candy bowl. Uh, <laughs> this, 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 you know, it's a skull that's fun, but it's also an anatomically correct medical model. And uh, one of the exciting applications for 3D printers like this is taking uh, digital scans uh, from MRI or CAT scans and turning them into uh, models that then doctors and researchers can use to uh, devise custom surgical implants to take a look at what procedures uh, the consequence of those might be on a body. And there is a, a lot of interest in custom medical solutions yeah. using 3D printers. See, I'd love something like this on my desk, and I'd put, like, uh, Boston baked beans or something <laughs> in here. So if you, if you lift the top, it looks like brain matter. Uh, yeah. I know that's just my sense of humor, I guess. <laughs> and that, the future of 3D printing. <laughs> yeah. But what's neat about that is that not only does it aid in design of perhaps new products, I mean, it's an inventor's dream uh, to have a, a great 3D printer, but it's also awesome for hobbies 
activities and projects for school for the kids, and they've gotten to a point where they're affordable. How much is the Form 1, for example? So the Form 1 retails for $3,299. Yeah. Okay, so it's not the kind that we're all going to run out and buy right away. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we say it's a prosumer printer. So yeah. if you're someone who wants to make something, if you're someone with real ideas that you want to bring into reality, you know, we think that's a price that most people can afford. Oh, sure, and especially from a business standpoint. I mean, look at the money it's going to save you to not have to go out and, and completely manufacture the first of something to see if it's going to work appropriately and look right and all that. Absolutely. Invest in the 3D printer of your own and do it too. Uh, but that's awesome. And, and again, we invite you to check things out at formlabs.com. You'll see what Sam and his team are up to. And uh, are there other models uh, you guys are working on? Is this is this the first one? This thus is the Form 1? The <laughs> Form 1. We just started shipping this year and uh, you know we're really focused on making it the best printer out there. Okay, awesome. Well, I, I can't wait to see it more so in action. A little hard to have to have you do all of that here uh, in our little table at the broadcast booth. Uh, but no doubt, uh, some great opportunities with 3D printing uh, are just ahead of us. We've barely scratched the surface or printed the surface, I think, would be appropriate. So, Sam, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. We'll let you get back to your very busy exhibit here. Thank you so much. Again, formlabs.com. We'll link you there. Just visit us at intotomorrow.com, and you'll see what Sam and his team are doing and all of our guests here at CES. I'm Dave Graveline. Into Tomorrow continues from Las Vegas here on the Advanced Media Network. Don't go away.